Stanley Kubrick, Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan. Filmmakers with different styles and stories, but the one thing they share is that they are all auteurs. In 1954, François Truffaut wrote an article for Cahier du Cinéma titled Une certaine tendance du cinéma français. It discussed traditional filmmaking at the time as conservative and unexciting. The article intrigued American critic Andrew Sarris, who coined the term auteur theory. The French word for author, an auteur is a film director with a strong artistic influence, with each of their films sharing common themes or techniques that express their style and vision. According to Sarris, a film director needs to fulfill three criteria to be deemed an auteur: technical competence, personal style, and interior meaning. In terms of images, I just think in images and I think in sounds, and that's what a filmmaker is. I'm not a novelist. I don't write books. You know, I write in images. So, what about Scottish filmmaker Lynn Ramsay, who has surprised and impressed audiences and critics alike with films like Gasman, Swimmer, Ratcatcher, You Were Never Really Here, and We Need to Talk About Kevin? How is she an auteur? Using Sarris's three premises on autourism, I will be analyzing a five-minute sequence from Ramsey's "We Need to Talk About Kevin," where Kevin gets arrested for the school mass shooting, and Eva goes home to find her daughter and husband dead in the backyard. Released in 2011, "We Need to Talk About Kevin" is based on the book with the same title by author Lionel Shriver, and tells the story of Eva and Kevin Kachidorian, a mother and son who are worlds apart. After Kevin commits a heinous crime at his high school, Eva is tragically forced to deal with the consequences. Technical competence. Sarris refers to a director as a criterion of value. He describes how even a badly directed film can be studied for its script, mise en scène, the sound, and music. Throughout the film, Ramsey especially makes use of the sound design, the color red, and lighting to visualize a character's state of mind. To depict Eva's detachment from reality in this sequence, Ramsey uses sounds that are muffled. Emphasize with reverb. Or with music that complements rising tension. She does this in her other films as well. Ah! For God's sake! Look at the state of my cotton. Ramsey's use of eerie silence aptly creates an uncomfortably tense atmosphere as the audience anticipates the final catastrophe. Ceiling. With sound design, juxtaposing Eva's state of mind is Kevin's sociopathy. The crowd of people crying and screaming await the school doors to open, though the only thing heard are camera bulb flashes, as if everyone is waiting for a celebrity. Moreover, as Kevin walks out, he is met with applause and cheers. The atmosphere of a red carpet. Red. Generally, it is used to signify love, passion, violence, danger, anger, and power. And we need to talk about Kevin uses red abundantly. While throughout the film, Eva continues to clean her vandalized house, symbolism for her strive to erase her past. In the chosen sequence, red points to threat. The lighting design, coupled with reverbed sounds of shot arrows and a cheerleading team, while Eva lays motionless, enables the audience to understand the torment she is going through. Personal style. For Sarris, the way a film looks and moves should have some relationship to the way a director thinks and feels. Lynn Ramsey's stories revolve around stylized social realism, with focus on character-driven stories depicting a character's psyche. It's through the the character and the study of character that I find the plot and the emotions. I thought I was making this pulpy B noir and action movie, and then I did what I always did do, which is actually make a character study. We need to talk about Kevin introduces the audience to a family of foils: Eva and Kevin Kachidorian. To portray the disparity and frustration between Eva and Kevin over the years, Ramsey makes use of visual metaphors, parallels, and contrasts. In the chosen sequence, Ramsey combines her technical competency and characterization to visualize Eva's lost hope and detachment. Ramsey illuminates Eva in red light as she lays still on her bed. The sequence intercuts with shots of Kevin shooting arrows, with the editing making it seem as though Kevin is shooting her. In a twisted sense of guilt, she can't help but see herself as the cause of the incident. Him being demon seed would be easier. 
yes. for her than him being so like her. That's the thing that's really the nightmare for her. Similarly, in You Were Never Really Here, the protagonist shoots himself but wakes up unharmed to visually capture that he has moved on from the guilt put on his shoulders. We Need to Talk About Kevin is the origin story of a sociopath. Kevin's descent into malevolence begins with the typical bickering of a troublesome child, though the audience soon witnesses his darker side at the film's climax. It's Kevin's way of expressing his satirical thanks to his mom for raising him into who he has become. It's a bit like a perverse love story, because, you know, in a way, they end up together. The whole high school thing's a smokescreen, in a way. It's like, I'll make you love me. Through the scenes leading up to this sequence, the audience grows familiar with Eva's frustration, though now they get a glimpse of Kevin's psyche. Ramsey simulates a red carpet atmosphere through sound design, emphasizing Kevin's manacle and sociopathic attitude. He enjoys the attention. You don't think they would have changed the channel by now if all I did was get an A in geometry? After fulfilling his purpose, Kevin's completed arc of villainy leaves the audience cold and speechless. Kevin will never allow Eva to forget his mistreated childhood. Interior Meaning in the words of Saris, interior meaning is extrapolated from the tension between a director's personality and his material. It is the underlying messages of the film that illustrate the mindset of the filmmaker. The context in Lynn Ramsey's films stems from her style of social realism, surrounding the concept of trauma. Common themes in her films are grief, guilt, death, and the aftermath. She combines these with taboo subject matter like child deaths, child prostitution, school shootings, abuse, and adultery. We Need to Talk About Kevin is no different. Through social realism in the film, Ramsey's critical commentary challenges society, parenthood, and the upbringing of children. We keep feeding the child and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger till he overtakes us. So I made this metaphor in the film about our society too, that we're ignoring the spoiled child. In the chosen sequence, all her common themes are depicted clearly. Ramsey leaves the audience to contemplate about the nature versus nurture debate and how society in the end can be largely responsible for the grief, guilt, death and aftermath caused by one seemingly innocent child. Auteur Theory Courtesy of Andrew Serres, a director can be deemed an auteur if they are technically competent, have a distinctive personal style, and integrate a deeper meaning into their films. Lynn Ramsey's We Need to Talk About Kevin perfectly illustrates her auteurism through immersing the audience with sound design and lighting, building relatable and multi-layered characters, and creating social commentary on taboo issues. It's amazing, it's like the best job in the world. You have tons of responsibility, but it's a privilege as well. I don't want to just be like a female filmmaker, I want to be a great filmmaker, I want to experiment, I want to do my best, you know. The, the politics I hate, the filmmaking I love, yeah. yeah.